In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate delta G gives free energy for redox reactions. It's been a while since we talked about delta G, so let's just begin with a bit of a refresher. For a spontaneous reaction, the value of delta G is always a negative number. Remember, a spontaneous reaction is one that takes place all on its own without any sort of external manipulation. A non-spontaneous reaction always has a delta G value that is a positive number. And when a reaction is in equilibrium, which means the rate of its forward reaction is equal to the rate of its reverse reaction, the value of delta G is always zero. We could also make these same types of generalizations about the value of E cell. For a spontaneous reaction, the value of E cell is always going to be a positive number. This means that the galvanic cell is producing electricity. For a non-spontaneous galvanic cell, the value of E cell is always going to be a negative number. This means that it requires energy. And when a galvanic cell is in equilibrium, the value of E cell is going to be equal to zero. This gives us a relationship between delta G and E cell. We can see that it's a direct relationship, but it is opposite in sign. The equation that we can use to calculate delta G from E cell is negative NF E cell. If these are standard conditions, we could go ahead and put a standard symbol on there. Uh, most of the terms in this equation you're already familiar with, so you already know that delta G is Gibbs free energy, and you already know that the purpose of delta G is really just to help us get an idea about the spontaneity of a reaction. You also already know all about E cell, the voltage of a galvanic cell, which we get by taking the potential of the cathode and subtracting the potential of the anode. N is a term that you are familiar with. You know that it represents moles. In this equation, it specifically represents moles of electrons that are being exchanged in the redox reaction. So in order to get the value of N for this equation, we're going to have to figure out how many moles are being swapped back and forth in the redox reaction. F is a brand new number for you. This is a constant called Faraday's constant. Its value is 96,500. Faraday's constant gives us a conversion factor between the volts that come from E cell and the joules that we need for Gibbs free energy. The units of Faraday's constant are joules per volt times mole of electrons, referring to the moles of electrons for N. So this is a pretty straightforward equation to use. And we have an example over here that we're going to use um, to practice using this delta G equals NF E cell equation. We're going to calculate the delta G for this particular redox reaction, copper ions plus iron atoms being converted to copper atoms and iron two plus ions. Because we're going to need to be calculating E cell to solve this problem, I have the reduction potentials already written down. I looked up on a, on a table of standard reduction potentials. So I have the reduction potential for the copper, copper two plus half reaction, and also for the iron, iron two plus half reaction. Let's just go ahead and start by plugging in the parts of this equation that we already know. I'm going to begin just by copying negative NF E cell. And let's go ahead and start with the value of N. Remember that N is the number of moles of electrons that are exchanged in the reaction. One way that we can figure this out is by separating these into their two half reactions and figuring out how many electrons are involved. Sometimes we don't have to do that though. Sometimes it's an easier process. And this is one example where it's a bit easier. If we just take a look at the difference between the copper two plus and the copper atom, we can see that the difference between these two chemicals is two electrons. It's going from a two plus to a neutral atom. So there's two electrons being exchanged there. And we can confirm that by also looking at the iron. Iron going to iron two plus is losing two electrons. So we know for sure that there are two moles of electrons that are being exchanged in this particular redox reaction. Now we can plug in the next term, which is F. Faraday's constant, 96,500 joules per volts times the moles of electrons. And then the last term in this is the E cell, which we need to calculate. We've got to figure that out. So I'm going to do that work down here. 
Remember that E cell is the cathode minus the anode. We have a few tricks to help us remember things. Um, we know that red cat means that the reduction is taking place at the cathode. And we also have oil rig, which tells us that oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So when we look at these two reactions, copper going to copper, copper two plus going to copper, this is taking place by the addition of two electrons. So the copper system is adding or gaining electrons, um, which means that it is the reduction. Again, like I'm gonna go over that one more time because I know that this is tricky. So I'm trying to figure out which of these is the oxidation, which of these is the reduction. I'm gonna begin by just focusing on the copper. I can see I'm going from copper two plus to copper metal. That is happening by adding two electrons to the copper ions. So electrons are being added in this half reaction or electrons are being gained, which is a reduction and reduction takes place at the cathode. So that means the first term in this E cell calculation is going to be the potential of the copper, copper two plus cell. And the second term is going to be the term of the, or the value of the iron, iron two plus cell. This gives us an overall E cell of positive 0.78 volts. So I'll plug that in. And now we're ready to just do the math on this. Now, if we take a look at the units here, we can see that we're going to end up with units of joules for our delta G. And it is going to be a negative number. And we get negative 150,000 joules. That's a pretty large number, so it's gonna make sense for us to convert that into kilojoules, and that's a pretty standard. Um, actually, I copied this off my calculator wrong, I rounded wrong. This is a, uh, kilojoules is a pretty standard unit for delta G, so converting it into kilojoules per mole is definitely logical. And this is how we can calculate delta G for a redox reaction.